Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Gaming City Com video, we're going to be discussing yet more tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with a bit of a curious one, the i3-7360X, that's right, a dual-core processor, on the X299 platform of all things. Then we have further specifications of the GTX 1070 Ti slash Ti, and then we're going to finish the video with Microsoft Andromeda OS, which is essentially a different take on Windows 10. But we're going to start out with the bizarre things first. You think KB Lake X quad cores were weird? No, get a load of this. This information is quite bonkers. This is the 7360X, which is, as you can imagine, a high-end desktop. I say that with parentheses the size of Mount Everest equivalent of the i3-7350K. This is even weirder, by the way, when you consider that 8350K is not too long before that's released. But anyway, the specifications, what are they? Well, not that great. Uh, yeah, it's a dual-core processor, of course. That means four threads total, thanks to our friend and buddy, hyperthreading. But really, the only positive here is 100 megahertz additional clock speed over the 7350K. Yep, there is one positive, however, and that is the fact that the TDP is 112 watts. So, in theory, it's good for overclocking. So this information originates from Beidou, and quite honestly, I'm not saying that no one ever is going to buy this motherboard, uh, sorry, this processor, but it just, it, it's a bit weird. Like, if this thing had come out at the time of the X299's release, and you are someone who perhaps wanted to buy the 7980XE just for the sake of argument, but you wanted to put in your motherboard now, you wanted to put in the graphics card, you wanted to build everything around it, you know, you wanted to install Windows, and you were happy to wait a couple of months, I could understand this, especially if the processor was a bit cheaper, but at this point in, this, uh, in the platform's life, in other words, when it's established and for 220 US dollars, I'm not saying it's not going to have a market at all. I'm sure someone somewhere is going to want to buy this for whatever reason. I just don't think it's going to be the majority of us. Next video, or next article rather, or next subject, and that is the GTX 1070 Ti slash Ti. Now this one's actually a bit weird because it is actually even more powerful than what we originally suspected. The early rumours of the 1070 Ti slash Ti slash Big Brother is that it was going to have 2,304 CUDA cores. Well, this doesn't appear to be the case any longer. In fact, it appears that we're going to have a GPU which has 2,432 CUDA cores. That's right, it's just not that far away at all. It's only 128 CUDA cores fewer than the GTX 1080. In fact, the only real thing that could possibly impact the performance is the clock speeds of the memory. That is, of course, it's still running a 256-bit bus, which isn't too surprising. But memory has seen a rapid decrease in performance. We're only looking at 8 gigabytes of GDDR5, so... Essentially, it's using exactly the same com memory configuration as the GTX 1070 vanilla on um, 8 gigabits per second. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that impacts performance and how overclockable the memory is. Because in all other ways, it's very much identical to the GTX 1080. I'm not going to say like it would beat it because obviously it has fewer CUDA cores. But from what we're hearing, the price is going to be considerably cheaper. It's going to be about 75, 100 US dollars cheaper than the um, than the 1080, which means in theory it could cost about 430, 440 US dollars. Obviously, it's going to depend on how much people decide to rip you off at the retailer. Uh, this information comes to us via mydrivers.com, and obviously this is not on confirmation. Excuse me, that this is going to happen, but I would not be surprised. And Supposedly, this GPU is not going to ship like, you know, November or something like that. It's supposedly going to hit in October, which could put AMD's uh, Vega cards in a bit of a weird situation. Okay, so what is almost 30 years old? That's right, Windows. When you think about it, the actual 
Windows operating system. A lot of change, of course. We've seen the shift to 32-bit native. We've seen the shift to 64-bit native. We've seen reworks of the network stack. We've seen the implementation of DirectX as like one of the core features of the system. We've seen major changes in security. You get the idea. But essentially, Windows is about 30 years old. And that's a long time. So a website by the name of Windows Central, which pretty much by the uh, name of the website itself, you can probably guess, focuses a lot on Microsoft leaks. According to them, they've been to talking to multiple sources, which Microsoft are calling the Andromeda operating system. They believe it's going to be the future backbone for Windows. And in essence, it's going to make Windows 10 a universal OS. What does it do? Well, it really um, has the desire to make Windows cross-platform across various different types of devices or architectures. And you can think of it as very modular. So if you want to, you can disable or enable features slash experiences as you require them. You can think of this as like, let's say it's on a mobile device, then certain features just aren't necessarily required. On the other hand, if you're on a full desktop, you possibly need those uh, options. But if you don't have, let's say for the sake of argument, a touchscreen uh, system, then having those core functionalities installed just makes absolutely no sense. So this will, in theory at least, allow Microsoft to customize it or allow OEMs to customize it or usage scenarios to customize it. So you're no longer having to build an operating system for a specific device. Instead, um, Microsoft are hoping that the, the actual flexibility will just allow the features to, and functions to just uh, work quickly and efficiently. This is something to bear in mind because when you think about it, Windows 10 for mobile and Windows 10 for desktops are, yes, they are, they share the name Windows 10, but they are very different versions of Windows 10. You know, they, they are quite different. Whereas this wouldn't be. The actual core architecture would be very much underlying. It's just the feature set which would be enabled that would be different. So does that mean that desktop versions of Andromeda OS are going to essentially be pushed to the wayside? No. Think of it this way. If you're a desktop user, what options do you have? You've got Windows 10. You've got the home versions, the Chrome versions, the S. You've got various versions of server as well. And obviously, there are some inherent differences between those. For example, the serv server variants are obviously going to have things which you're going to need for certain environments but you only might need one or two features all the other features may just be superfluous you just don't simply require those features so at least according to these rumors we're going to have the ability to be much more free in how we configure the devices now how this is going to work in terms of licensing what the pricing structure is going to be and of course what performance differences there are going to be between this and uh, uh, regular Windows 10, it remains to be seen. It also makes a lot of sense because from the development side of things, if you're a developer that, that say, is working on an Xbox application, and I'm not talking necessarily a game here, you want to make sure that if you've done all of that work, it's also easy to bring to the PC or vice versa. So from Microsoft's point of view, it makes an awful lot of sense. I'm curious to see how customers really delve into this because we all know what happened with the whole uh, walled garden thing we've talked about that a couple of times before and it's a pretty well known um, subject so how is this all going to interact well unfortunately all we can do is wait and see with all of that said hopefully you've enjoyed the video i'll see you soon take care bye for now